So I've been studying uh, the genetics of uh, sexual orientation using twin studies oh, for 25 years or so. I think that uh, male sexual orientation is inborn, uh, and I think that we have pretty good reason to think that it is. And I mean very inborn, resistant to change. There's no evidence that it changes. So in uh, 1990, shortly after I got at Northwestern, I began a uh, uh, twin study that I expected to have uh, more accurate uh, results from. Uh, we advertised uh, throughout the country for gay twins. Um, and why is that better? I think uh, in part, you know, we uh, uh, tried to publicize it widely. Uh, and also, I think that um, homosexuality was a lot less stigmatized in 1990 than it was in the 50s. Uh, and then the results of that study in our, both for both men and women were consistent with uh, moderate genetic influence. So for example, for the men, 52% uh, of the identical twins who were gay had gay identical twins, uh, compared with 22% uh, of the fraternal twins. So the fact that it was only 52% and not 100% shows it can't be completely genetic. But the fact that it was 52 for identical versus 22 for fraternal is consistent with some moderate genetic influence. With respect to gender nonconformity, uh, here's uh, what, we what we found in twins. Uh, among identical twins, um, they were very similar if they were both gay. So if they were both gay, the, if one of them was very feminine as a boy, the other one was very feminine as a boy. If one of them was typically masculine as a boy, the other one was typically masculine as a boy. Now this similarity broke down completely in the pairs with different sexual orientations. A very feminine uh, gay man did not necessarily have a very feminine straight man, straight brother, that is. Much genetic influence is, uh, can be thought of as something that pushes one a certain way, but doesn't push them all the way there. Uh, and uh, this is true for all kinds of things, uh, including uh, diseases and personality and uh, intelligence and so on. Uh, and I think the same is true for sexual orientation. Uh, it's, we, we don't think of uh, genes as determining these things, and they can't be, uh, unless uh, heritability or, or the, the index of genetic causation is 100%. And for none of the things that I mention, uh, is heritability 100%. People often uh, get confused in their terminology. Uh, they ask, for example, is uh, homosexuality genetic or is it learned? Well, genetic is not the opposite of learned. Uh, I think uh, inborn is the opposite of learned. A trait can be completely inborn without being completely genetic, and I think male sexual orientation is a case in hand. I think that uh, we can reject immediately the idea that uh, male homosexuality is caused by having a distant father uh, or an overbearing mother. Uh, we have lots of evidence to the contrary. In uh, men, sexual orientation is completely inborn. The reason why I believe that uh, is, uh, comes from cases of boys uh, who, uh, due to some accident or uh, medical condition, are turned into girls early in life uh, and followed into adulthood. These cases are very rare. Uh, and uh, when th these cases are followed up into adulthood, you want to know, who are they attracted to? If it's nurture, then because they're raised as girls, they should be attracted to men. If it's nature, because they were born 
males. They should be attracted to women. And it is to women that they're attracted. In every single published case, there are about five cases in the literature like this. Uh, and I think that if you can't make a male attracted to other males by cutting off his penis and rearing him as a girl, then it's impossible that sexual orientation is learned in men. In terms of the specific causes of sexual orientation, we know hardly anything. In terms of the big question, like is sexual orientation innate or learned, I think that at least for men, we know uh, it is innate. Uh, for women, uh, the picture is a little less clear. Uh, there are some similarities uh, to the male case. So for example, bo in both men and women, uh, we have uh, uh, the same uh, developmental predictors. Both gay men and lesbians tend to be cross-gendered a bit as children. Um, but uh, also, people think that uh, female sexuality is uh, more malleable, uh, perhaps more responsive to environmental inputs uh, and social causation than male sexual orientation is. So I wouldn't be surprised if women's sexual orientation does respond a bit to their experiences. Uh, I don't think male sexual orientation does at all. Now, something to make very clear is the nature of environment. When I talk about environment as a behavior geneticist, all I mean is something that is not genetic. I don't mean that it has to be social. It doesn't have to be what your mother did to you or what your father did to you or that experience that you had early on. It could also be whatever happened to you in the womb or uh, illnesses that you might have had, things you might have eaten, uh, even kind of random processes that we don't understand very well uh, that seem to affect people's development. 